You guys better be sitting down for this. We've got an amazing new Studio Rack feature available right now, I promise will blow your socks off. And it's all to do with your plugins. No, not just your Waves plugins, but all of your non-Waves VST3 plugins. That's right. By popular demand, the latest version of Studio Rack, Waves Free Plugin Chainer, has evolved and now has the power to host VST3 plugins from any developer, letting you create great mixing chains with your Waves and third-party VST3 plugins, blend new colors with the original source using parallel splits, turn any plugin or collection of plugins into custom multiband processors, manipulate multiple functions across your chains with eight customizable macros, Studio Rack does it all easily. Studio Rack is also a fantastic cross-platform plugin. Easily export, load, and share any of your plugin chains as presets, and load them instantly in any other DAW that supports Studio Rack. And did I mention that Studio Rack is absolutely free? So to get Studio Rack up and running with your favorite VST3s, visit waves.com to grab your free copy. Link in the description below. To get all your VST3s in your plugin collection catalogued in Studio Rack, you'll be prompted to scan for these when you first launch Studio Rack in a session. If you decide to scan later, no problem. From the top drop-down menu under VST3, you can scan for either a single plugin or scan for all the VSTs in your system. In some cases, you may also need to locate your VST3 master folder, which you can set here. When the scan completes, you'll find all your VST3s from other developers listed within the main chainer, along with any Waves plugins you already have licenses for. To help you find the tools that you need quickly, there's also an option to sort plugins by vendor or by category. Let me show you what sets Studio Rack apart from the ways that you typically work with plugins in your DAW. Let's make a vocal mixing chain. And I've already got the ball rolling with a handful of inserts here, so some pitch correction. All I've done here is set the key and scale and an appropriate tuning speed. Next, I've got an EQ for some corrective tone shaping, followed by a compressor. And I've got a few key controls from two of these inserts mapped across over on three of the macros. In the EQ, we've got a high pass filter on macro one. Macro two, I've got one called body, which can either boost the low mids or cut and a macro for the compressor. And if you notice, this one macro has the ability to manipulate two controls. So in our box, as the compressor goes down, the gain chases it, which gives us a more consistent level at the output. Let's get the beginnings of a vocal mix going with just these three macros. I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark I'm still breathing, but the fight's gone My fire's turned into a spark Okay, so dialing in some tone and some dynamic control was really easy just using those macros. I didn't need to look in any of the plugins and get distracted with all the controls as I had everything I needed already assigned over here on those macros. So let's add a few more inserts now and get this vocal sounding a little bit more polished. Let's get a de going. And let's get the range control mapped over to macro four. And there's three ways to do this. The benefit of using Waves plugins in Studio Rack is that you can right click any control and simply add macro down here. Macro four is the available one, let's click that. And it's already given that an appropriate name. I can always change this name if I want, double click, let's call it DS, and there we go, we have control. Now the other two ways of getting your macros assigned, and this will be applicable to working with your third party VSTs, is to either click the macro, find the plugin and control that you want to assign and select it there. Or a much simpler way is to click the assign button and you'll notice the macros highlights here. So I'm just gonna click macro four and then over in the plugin, I can click the control that I want to link. And it's just that simple. And when you're happy with your macro, just disengage the assign button. Okay, let's get some effects going. And I'm gonna use the parallel splits for this. And on default, you get two racks that load up. I'm gonna keep the first rack as our dry rack and engage the second rack to be our effects rack. Let's insert a non-waves VST3 reverb here. At the bottom of these racks, we've got two faders, so we can use this one here on the second rack to blend our effects in. Let's take a listen. I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark what we can also do with the macros is control anything we want within Studio Rack. So this fader down here, which is giving us the reverb level, we can right click on this and we can add that to a macro. There we go, and we can call that verb. You can see that controls that fader down there. 
Or we could just keep that at Unity and control the mix level within that plugin. I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark Now if the parallel splits, you can have up to eight racks. So let's add another. Let's go for some delay. And with this, I'm just going to assign macro six over to the rack three fader for the level of the delay. Cause I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark as you can see, you can build really complex chains and control them simply over here on these macros. I'm doing very little, if anything, in the plugins themselves. If I wanted to, I could fold this all down and just work with these macros. Now let's talk about multiband splits. You can have up to five racks with these. In between each rack, you've got your crossover, fader, and pan. All pretty self-explanatory stuff. But what's clever about this is that you can use any plugin you like or combination of and make your own multiband processors. So you could take any Dynamics plugin you wish or effect that isn't a multiband processor and split that up across different frequency ranges. Or process maybe just a specific part within your frequency range. Say this top end area up here. I fancy having some doubling. Gives a little bit of width. Cause I've been sleeping with the light on. Let's bring it in. Well, I'm losing courage in the dark. It's nice. I like it so much I'm going to put it on a macro. Macro 7, I'm going to call that Air Width. Let's do a quick before and after. I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark Cause I've been sleeping with the light on well, I'm losing courage in the dark now, a couple other things you need to know about Studio Rack is that you can move any of this about at any time. So let's say I want to move the multiband split down and put the parallel split behind. Very easy. It's just drag and drop. Maybe reorder these plugins up here. Can do that again. No problem. And all of these changes don't make any difference over here on the macros. And if you find that any of your levels getting a bit hot, let's say we've got a trim level down here to back that off a little bit before it goes to the output. Or if your chain is maybe just a little bit too soft and you want to bring a bit of level back up. You can do so there. But more importantly, don't forget that these chains can be saved as presets, which you can use in other sessions and share with your collaborators, whatever takes your fancy. Studio Rack has always been so much more than just a plug-in chain preset system. And now it's so much more than ever before, as you can now use it with any VST3s you like alongside your favorite Waves plugins. Make presets, make chains, make custom multiband processors from whatever plugins you choose. Blend sounds with epic parallel split racks, even make your own custom plugins with the eight fully customizable macros. Whatever you choose to do with the amazing plugin chain of features in Studio Rack, make sure you download your free copy today and make sure you go make some great music with it.